In light of recent news, Unity decided to serve their users a load of So for those of you interested in trying out the Godot engine, I'm gonna make this short and sweet. Let's make a game in 9 minutes. Here's where you can install the latest version. Extract. Put it somewhere nice. So I installed it here. Open it up. New project. Select an empty folder. We're going to use for Forward Plus. It has all the fancy features. If you want to do mobile, use this. Compatibility doesn't have all the new bells and whistles, so we'll use Forward Plus. So we're going to be making a little 2D game. Here's 2D view, 3D view, your scripts, and everything. We're going to be adding nodes. Nodes are like components for the games. Your file system will be here, and we'll be inspecting the nodes and editing them here. So the root of our game is going to be a 2D scene. This is going to be level one. So you can double click to rename or you can right click rename like that. All right, we're going to save this. It's going to be a scene. Save it. You can see .tsn and you can see here when I click on the node, I inspect the node here. Here's the transform, rotation, scale, visibility. Go through all of these and see what it's about. We're going to add a tile map. So when you add different types of nodes, you click this plus button here. Feel free to look at the various nodes that they offer for 2D, 3D control is for UI stuff. We're going to add a 2D node, which is the tile map. And if you come here in the inspector, you'll see there are different properties. You could see that the tile map also has similar um, inheritance that the level one node and canvas item it also has, but it has its own unique tile map features. So we're going to create a new tile set. And there are two new tabs that we get for our tile map and tile set. I have a tile that we're going to use. It is a simple 16 by 16 tile. And this PNG, we're going to drag it into here. It's going to automatically create tiles. And if you want, you can already start drawing by scrolling in and you can draw the tiles or you can do it like this by grabbing there's paint bucket you could do shapes you could do lines all and if you want to erase you uh get the eraser and get this erase it like that nice okay so let's draw some little platform structure like that if your tiles are blurry you want to come in here to the project settings go to textures it's under rendering and press nearest and then they should be good if we click into the tile sets you'll see that there's more property our tiles is going to be 16 by 16 but you can change that um, we also want collisions so the way we do that make sure to click into here physics layer we're going to add that and when we edit each tile um, we want to click the select key select the tile come here into physics physics layer zero that's the one we created here and we want to add the collisions now we have added collisions here but we don't have a main character here we're going to add a new scene let's first save our level one create a new scene so the root node for this is not going to be a 2d scene it is going to be a character body 2d there's a warning here because we need collisions so let's add a collision node collision shape there's a warning because it needs a shape so we come here into the inspector by the way you can look at the inspector for the different properties that character body 2d has come in here let's make it small and instead of adding actually we could add a sprite so let's add a sprite 2d and let's drag in this beautiful godot icon because godot is beautiful you can see that uh, we don't see our collision that is because it's drawing the collision first and then it's drawing the sprite on top so if we change the order then we see it cool so let's save this scene as player so scenes are composed of multiple nodes and when we want to add a scene to another scene instead of adding this plus we're going to add this paper clip and our beautiful player is there 
The cool thing is, when we add a script to a character body 2D, you'll see that it's .gd. If you're using GD script, you can also use C Sharp. When we create it, it already has all the logic. Because in Godot, left is negative x, right is positive x, but up is negative y and down is positive y. That's why it is negative. We have a gravity variable. It's a variable, so we can change it. This physics process is like the update function in U Unity. It runs like 60 times a second. Okay, and it has delta as a parameter. So if we're not, this is for gravity. If we're not on the floor, it's incrementing the velocity dot y. Velocity is a built-in variable for the character body 2D. We're incrementing the y by gravity times delta. Okay, so this is handling the jump. So if uh, ui accept, which is probably spacebar, if we press spacebar and we are on the floor, we're doing jump. If we want to make a custom input, we're going to come in here to the project settings. Uh, you'll start at general. You go to the input map and let's type jump. This is our custom input. We're going to add an input, press spacebar. I want spacebar to be jump and write it in here. So if we press jump, which is spacebar, and we're on the floor, we could jump. This gets the direction. So if we do UI left, UI right, let's make our own input for that left add right add i want left to be the left arrow and i also want left to be the a key if you like wasd right to be the right arrow and right to be the d key so instead of ui left and ui right by the way if you want to access these when you come in here and you go to project settings you can say show built in actions and you'll see that they, these are all built in and you could find those as well but i don't like that so here we'll use our custom ones so if we hit the left arrow the direction will be negative one if we hit the right it'll be positive one so if we're hitting something it's going to change velocity x to the direction which is negative one or positive one or zero times speed and if we're not pressing anything it wants to gradually move our velocity back to zero um, by speed. If you're curious about any of these functions, the physics process is on floor. You can hold control and, it, and click into it and it'll tell you more about it. So this is the documentation. You can also look at the physics process. Also for any of these nodes, I can right click and open the documentation. It'll tell you all this information, the properties, the methods that you can use, everything. And the move and slide function is, it takes this velocity and it moves it based on velocity, which is a built-in property. So now that we've added collisions in our character, we need a camera. So let's add a camera node. If we zoom out, you'll see those are the boundaries. We're going to want to zoom in. We want to play the current scene, so we click that. And bam. Yes, let's quickly implement death. So we're going to use an area 2D node. And the area 2D requires a collision shape. So we'll add that. The collision shape 2D, remember, we add the collision here. So let's bring it down. So um, we want to detect if a body is interacting with this so if we come here next to the inspector there's another tab node these are for signals they're like events in unity we want to check if a body has entered and we need to make a script for this level let's add level one script delete everything because we want to connect this event or signal as it's referred to in godot to our level one all right so let's print falling Let's see if it successfully detects when a character falls. And it has, because you can see it has printed falling. Okay, but instead, what we want to do is we want to reset the scene. So we're going to get tree, change scene to file, level one. Run it again, and when we fall, it resets the level. And that's how simple Godot game. Godot is very easy. Godot is great. Keep using it, and honestly, you're not going to regret it. Alrighty guys, see you later. Bye.